So we finally going to get a little bit of break in this rain. It's been raining for three days. We've had about six and a half inches of rain. I've been waiting for a sunny day, but I don't think we're going to get it. This is probably the best chance I'm going to get right here. Tony at Blue Collar Backcountry tagged me the other day. Said he wants to see my five favorite backpacking items. So, I started thinking about that. Have you ever thought about what your five favorite items are? I've always tried to follow the advice of Earl Schaefer, legendary backpacker, through hiker of the AT. He said, carry as little as possible, but choose that little with care. So everything I carry these days, I've really thought about and I've come to like quite a bit, most of it. So, yeah, let me think. My five favorite items. Holy cow. So here, after careful consideration, is my top five hiking gear picks list. Starting with number five. Anybody who's used darn tough socks, uh, you already know about this. I don't think they can be beat. They are super durable. In fact, the company gives you a lifetime warranty. If these socks ever wear out, send them back to the factory and they'll send you a brand new pair. Can't get much better than that. But these socks are made of merino wool. Uh, they are quick drying. You know, they wick the moisture really fast. So anyway, that's number five. Next is my Sea to Summit anodized uh, aluminum alloy spork. Uh, and to me, it doesn't matter if it's a spork or a fork or a spoon, but the important thing about this is it's long enough to where it can reach down into uh, a freezer bag, if you're doing freezer bag cooking, you can reach down into a mountain house meal, whatever you're using, uh, it's long enough to get down in there, and it weighs half an ounce, so, and, and it's strong. And the thing is, whether you're taking a stove or going stoveless, I still get hungry, or I still need some kind of utensil to eat with, so this always goes with me. Alright, next is my Sawyer Squeeze water filter. Not the mini, but the regular Sawyer Squeeze. Anybody who's used one knows how great they are. Uh, anybody as old as me remembers the days when we used chlorine or even halazone tablets to treat our water uh, before we can drink it. These things are amazing. Uh, I use this everywhere I go. So, uh, Sawyer Squeeze water filter. I just got this last year and it's already become my number two item. This is a underground quilt bandit and uh, it's rated for 20 degrees and I've already had it, I've used it twice, had it down to 17 degrees the first time I used it and it got down to 13 degrees the second time I used it and I was sleeping soundly. Uh, as warm as I could be, never got cold during the night and uh, I love this thing. It weighs under 23 ounces which is awesome and when you buy it UGQ sends you this uh, silk nylon tough sack along with it and they send you one of these uh, straps it's a kind of an elastic bungee type cord that works together with the quilt loops uh, to fit to your sleeping pad so that your, your quilt won't ride off of your, your sleeping pad during the night and it works really well 
they send you one for free along with the quilt. Uh, I think you can buy additional ones for a couple of bucks if you want to. Uh, I, I don't think I need another one. It's going to be fine just like it is. So that's number two. And my number one item is my Six Moon Designs Wild Oasis Sil Nylon Tent. Weighs 13 ounces when you get it from Six Moons. Once I seam sealed it, seems like it picked up about another little, little bit more than another ounce. So it weighs about 14 ounces. And that's in this Sil Nylon bag that uh, my wife made for me to carry it in. Uh, and then you throw in the six stakes and the little uh, Cuban fiber bag that I've got those in and that's another two ounces so uh, right around a pound for all that and then of course it doesn't have a floor I use uh, a sheet of Tyvek for the floor that weighs about another eight ounces so and then you know of course it's got multiple uses put my phone in there just uh, to give you an idea of how big this is that's a Google Nexus 5 in a ballistic case just to, if you have any idea how big that is. It's an Android phone. But uh, I'll roll in some, some footage of the tent. I, I've been using this thing for probably, for years. I, I don't even know how many years, for a long time. In fact, uh, Six Moon Designs discontinued this tent, unfortunately. Uh, you might still be able to find one on uh, eBay or something like that. But, uh, They've got something now they call the Deschutes 2, I think, which is practically the same tent, but it weighs just a little bit more than this one did. And uh, anyway, I'm still using this and I'll continue to use it until uh, I can't anymore. This is my go-to tent and my number one backpacking item. So there you have it. That's my top five hiking gear picks. All right, so now I'm supposed to keep this thing going by tagging five other people. I'm going to start off with a few of uh, the guys that that uh, I, I follow who have hiked the Appalachian Trail. And uh, all three of these guys are through hikers on the AT. First one is Old Loner. Uh, his uh, YouTube name is Loner2012 AT. His name's uh, Jeffrey Gray, and Jeffrey uh, hiked the AT in 2012, uh, did a through hike from George to Maine, and uh, Loner has recently written a book uh, last year called Painted Blazes about his uh, through hike, which if you haven't read it yet, you definitely want to check it out, and if you haven't followed Loner's uh, videos of his through hike, uh, they're still on YouTube. And he also uh, continues to make videos, so check out Loner. Number two, uh, Gary Sizer, Green Giant. Gary was an uh, AT2 hiker in 2014. And uh, I met Gary in Hot Springs when I was hiking on the AT in uh, 2016. He was there selling his book, uh, which uh, he titled, Where's the Next Shelter? Gary's a natural storyteller, and uh, if you haven't read his book, you definitely want to read it. He also has a lot of videos on YouTube on his through hike, as well as some other stuff. He's recently started doing uh, some audio blog uh, things with a friend of his on YouTube, which uh, are actually really good if you have time to listen to them. So, stories from the trail. Uh, third, I think I'm going to pick old uh, Baskets. Steve is an AT2 hiker, uh, trail named Baskets. He just hiked last year. And uh, I think he's just recently started doing some post trail gear reviews. So this might be something that, that he's gonna do anyway, but uh, Steve, your tag. <laughs> All right, so Baskets. And then I'm gonna switch over and uh, there's a couple of guys that I watch quite a bit uh, who hike the Washita Trail and have been hiking Washita Trail a lot last year, year or two, something like that, and uh, I'm real interested in that because I'm getting ready to do a through hike of the Washtenaw Trail myself. So, uh, I'm going to tag, first of all, old Paul and uh, Jackie B, his traveling companion, over at Somewhere on the Trail, and uh, Paul has 
recently, I think, completed his series of his OT through hike, or actually, it's, he did it in sections, but uh, he's completed the trail, he and Jackie, and uh, he's also got a lot of hiking videos on his channel from the Ozark Highlands Trail and quite a few other places too, so check out Paul at uh, Somewhere on the Trail. And last but not least, I think uh, I'm going to tag Anderson Adventures. Chris uh, at Anderson Adventures is another OT hiker as well as other trails, but uh, he's doing the OT in sections as well and he's got it all chronicled on his YouTube site, so be sure to check out uh, Anderson Adventures. So there you have it, y'all. Check them out, and also be sure to check out Blue Collar Backcountry if you're not familiar with him. Old Tony over there, he's got lots of good hiking videos, gear reviews, uh, you name it. He's got some good stuff. Thanks a lot, Tony. This was uh, turned out to be a little more fun than I thought it would be. Made me think. Take care. See you on the trail.